Once upon a time, there were two woodcutters named Peter and John. They were often at loggerheads over who chopped more wood. So one day, they decided to hold a competition to determine the winner. The rules were simple. Whoever produces the most wood in a day wins. So, next morning, both of them took up their positions in the forest and started chopping away at their fastest possible speed. This lasted for an hour before Peter suddenly stopped. When John realized there was no chopping sound from his opponent's side, he thought, Aha! He must be tired already. And he continued to cut down his trees with double the double the pace. A quarter of an hour passed, and John heard his opponent chopping again. So both of them carried on synchronously. John was starting to feel weary when the chopping from Peter stopped once again. Feeling motivated and smelling victory close by, John continued on with a smile on his face. They went on, this went on the whole day. Every hour, Peter would stop chopping for 15 minutes while John kept going relentlessly. So when the competition ended, John was absolutely confident that he would take the triumph. But to John's astonishment, Peter had actually cut more wood. How did this happen? How could you have chopped down more trees than me? I heard you stop working every hour for 15 minutes, exclaimed John. Peter replied, well, it's really simple. Every time I stopped work, while you were still chopping down trees, I was sharpening my axe. The average US adult reports that they sleep just seven hours and 36 minutes a night, according to a 2014 Sleep Foundation report. But it's likely people are getting less, less than that, at least in some areas. And according to a survey taken in 2020-2021 by eMarketer, Americans are investing nearly eight hours a day on digital content. U.S. adults log seven hours and 50 minutes on smartphones, desktops, and other devices watching digital content and engaging with online apps in 2020, which is expected to surpass eight hours a day by 2022. Now, I know the pandemic changed some things. You know, we were schooling from home and working from home and all these other things from home, and maybe that increased our, our screen time a bit. Sarah Williams started uh, uh, videoing online workouts, doing at-home workouts on Facebook during the pandemic. She would do workouts on Monday and Wednesday, and her friend Eric would do yoga on Tuesday and Thursday. Now, I'm no expert at fitness, and even less so at yoga, but I did learn some things through doing the yoga sessions with Eric twice a week, and that is the benefit of sitting in silence and resting. Now, I don't know how much you know about yoga. There are some poses. I'm not gonna to try to illustrate them for you this morning because it'd go bad. But it was a lot of sitting, breathing, and working on your posture. And in those moments with Eric, I, I came to realize just the benefit of sitting in silence, turning off phones, Granted, I had my phone live streaming on my laptop rather live streaming this session. But it was a lot of just sitting in silence, focusing on breathing, focusing on your surroundings, focusing on your posture. And in those moments, I felt at peace. Now, I don't know your stance with yoga because it is a crucial part of Hinduism. But it's also not overly unbiblical either. Rest and silence is biblical. So let's start at the beginning, shall we? Turn to Genesis chapter 2, verses 2 and 3, where it says, By the seventh day God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Now, I'm pretty sure God doesn't need rest. I'm pretty sure he never gets tired. However, he took a whole day of rest after creation to set the example. And I know this world tells us that if we aren't busy, then we aren't productive. There's all this pressure on us to be doing something, to be achieving something, to be meeting a goal of some sort. But our goal should be godliness, I hope. And that means taking a break every once in a while. You know, this world is all about run, run, run. 
if you aren't doing something, then you're wasting your time. But rest is essential to being a productive member of society, not to mention God's kingdom. He created the Sabbath for our benefit. Rest is good and necessary for us to function. And you might even put in proper rest is necessary and good for us to function. So our, our point number one is you need rest. You need rest. And the question is, how should we spend that time? Because I think a lot of people's default rest setting is to turn on the TV, get their phones out. And I can't imagine that's very healthy especially from what I've heard about the side effects of too much screen time, where depression rates are, are higher, anxiety is higher, because you're seeing what everybody else is doing, and you know, the old quote, comparison is the thief of joy. And so how are you spending that time? But you sh so you should find a healthy way to get rest, whether it's taking a nap, playing a board game with family, putting together a puzzle, or reading, or, or whatever else, just some constructive way of resting. Turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 10, where Solomon lays down some wisdom here. He says, If the axe is dull and its edge unsharpened, more strength is needed, but skill will bring success. In January of 2018, my last few months there at my last church before I moved here to Ross Gulf and to Lyme, Ohio, my home church, we took a youth mission trip to Missouri. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to Missouri in January, but it's not the best environment to be in because it's cold and I don't like cold, but we went there anyways. And what we did there, we were there for several days and one of the main tasks that we had was chopping up firewood for the, the camp that we were staying at. And I can tell you that chopping up firewood is a lot of hard work, and it takes a proper technique and proper skill to do it. But none of it matters. You can have the best technique. You can have the best breathing. You can have the best swing. You can have the best strength. But if your axe isn't sharpened, you're not going to chop the wood. You're not going to do what your goal is. And so Ecclesiastes might be talking about a literal axe, which is why it's a good illustration, because you can't chop wood with a dull axe. But I want us to think symbolically here for a moment. I think our greatest assets in this life, physically speaking, um, physically speaking, are our minds and our bodies. I think a lot of our sin starts in the mind. And when we think enough about it, it turns into action, then into habit. And if we continue that practice, it becomes a lifestyle soon becomes all of, who you are, all of who you are. And Solomon, the author of Ecclesiastes, is saying that if the axe is unsharpened, then more strength is necessary. But if the axe is sharpened, it won't take much effort. We have to take time to sharpen our minds so that those temptations that we face to try to get up and here and ultimately into who we are, they don't take root. They don't, um, they, they don't last long. They don't take advantage of who we are. They don't turn into action. Jesus is the perfect example of this. Turn to Luke chapter 5, verses 15 and 16. Where we are told, Yet the news about him spread all the more. That's Jesus so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. When Jesus went by himself, he prayed and spent time with God. How much time do you spend with God? How much time do you, compared to watching TV or being on your phone are you spending in prayer or Bible reading? Jesus was constantly on the move, going from place to place, healing people, preaching and teaching, and performing other miracles. But he was always able to balance it out with his relationship with God, with time spent in prayer, talking with his Father. And so our sermon point number two is to find time to be by yourself and be with God. Growing up, I never really knew what quiet time was. I heard people at church talk about it a lot. But I was never taught the importance of that or value of it nor how to have a good quiet time, or, or time with God, if you aren't familiar with that uh, phrase of it, quiet time. 
And as I went through college at Lincoln and then got hired on here, I started having quiet time each morning. I take time to read my Bible and pray because I knew if I wanted to be a successful youth pastor or successful at whatever I was going to do, I needed to have time with God. I needed to have that daily time of refreshing and spiritual nurturing uh, with God. And so when I first started out, it was maybe 10 or 20 minutes uh, at the start that I would take in the morning, you know, read a couple of chapters of scripture, take time to pray. And anymore, it's around 40 minutes that I take uh, where I read about four chapters of scripture. It's usually my goal is to read four chapters each day and then pray over, you know, I pray over all the prayer lists, all the, all the entries on our prayer list here at church, along with other people in my life back home that, that I know need prayer. And I don't say that to brag or anything. I say it actually because I want you to know that I can do all that I do here if I'm not continuously, habitually connected to God. Because I don't know if you notice this, but life can get stressful sometimes. Being in the Bible each morning helps me keep my head on straight. And it gives me time to rest in God's truth. So you get in the Bible and allow that time with God to refresh you, to strengthen, and encourage you. This life is hard, and it will only get harder if we aren't taking time daily to spend time with God and refresh our souls. That's why rest is so important. Jesus understood that. So he went off on his own, making sure there were no distractions to keep him from being from God, from being with God. And in our world, same things exist today. There are so many distractions, screens being one of them. There are so many different ways we can spend our time today. And as I mentioned earlier, screen time is a big one. But it really all boils down to the question, who is your master? Are movie stars your athletes? Are politicians? Is it your job? Is it you? Any one of these other masters makes it easy to sacrifice time with God for time watching TV, for getting on your phone, or working on a project for work. But the radical part about this concept of Sabbath rest is that it is putting both God and you first. Isn't that crazy? Because, you know, God loves you. And so he wants the best for you. And so he wouldn't ask you to do something unless he knew that it was for a good purpose. And so God created this for us, that we are always able to do what is needed from us. And so when we face trials, we are ready and prepared to deal with them properly. Turn to Matthew chapter 26, verses 62, the first part of 63. It says, Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. The final hours of Jesus' life are simply incredible to me. I don't know how he does it. He, he just stands there while the Pharisees are bringing these bogus charges against him. And, and the evidence, the, the testimonies that they give, they don't even match up. Which is why everybody that he went to, including Pilate, declared him innocent. But he just stood there in silence. He just stood there and took it. No complaining, no fighting, nothing. And I wonder how many of us could do the same. How many of us could stand in a courtroom where bogus charges are being thrown at us, where we know that we are innocent, and yet we just take it. We just let them sentence us to death. But you know why Jesus was able to stay peaceful? and comfortably quiet during this time? It's because he spent, he spent the entire previous night in the Garden of Gethsemane praying and being with God. Yeah, I bet he was scared. You know, he sweat drops of blood when he was praying. I think he was a pretty scared person. He was about to face the most gruesome death ever. He was probably terrified. But in his heart, he knew that God was in control. So when the time came, Jesus had peace. He didn't fight the charges against him because he knew it was all going to be okay. I always go back to that Hebrews 12.1 or 12.2 uh, 
passage uh, where it says, For the joy set before him, Christ endured the cross. And he endured the cross because he habitually sought after God. And that's our third point this morning, is to make it a habit. Being quiet and at peace in our day-to-day lives isn't normal for us. Some might even call it unnatural. But God calls it good. God calls it necessary. And last I knew, God loves us unconditionally. So I think what he wants for us is probably for our good. So this week, I challenge you to set aside your phones, turn off the TV, and put your computer away. Find peace in the quietness of your life. And in those silent times, allow God to speak to you. Because God doesn't always talk in the whirlwind, in the earthquake, or in the fire. But he often talks in a whisper. So so we need to be prepared to hear it. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for rest. We thank you that you set the example for us and for the good that comes of it. Father, help us to set aside our own desires, our own wants, our own thoughts about what we need to do with our time, and help us to be at peace with you. Spend that time each day in your word and prayer to make a habit of it so that we aren't caught up in the craziness of this world, but so that we have peace because we know you're always in control. Father, help us to do this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.